Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Zubair. Welcome again to Harmony. Welcome back. We're still re reading from the same book, the same series, from the same author. Uh, Said Nursi's The Words from the Risale Nur collection. We are in the first word. Yep. We are in the next paragraph. What is the next paragraph? Uh, it is the first, uh, it's just a reminder, if we're following from the book, the English book, page 16, uh, actually, it's not a new chapter in the English, but in the original version, it is a separate uh, chapter. It's not a new paragraph, paragraph in the t English version, but it is a separate paragraph in the English, so it is a good starting point. Yep. So it's <coughs> we'll start at the very top of page 16, and so. And so, two men went on such a journey and entered the desert. One, one of them was modest and humble, the other proud and conceited. The humble man assumed the name of a, pr a tribal chief, while the proud man did not. The first traveled safely wherever he went. If he encountered bandits, he said, I am traveling in the name of such and such tribal leader, and they did not molest him. If he came to some tents, he was treated respectfully due to the name. But the proud man suffered indescribable calamities throughout his journey. He both trembled before everything and begged from everything. He was abased and, become an ob and became an object of scorn. That's a terrible end, right? It continues, but yes, it is a, a terrible end. I, I think we're supposed to get a lesson from it. Okay. But to go through it... I'll we borrow your book. Okay. We need to go through it, I think. So where there are some words, I think, proud and conceited. Mm -hmm. and one man was proud and conceited on this journey. Yeah. And the other was humble, modest. Mm, mod modest and humble. Modest and humble. Okay. So... Uh, you have the original text with you. Yep. And let's talk about those two words. I think those are the key words in this paragraph. Yeah, you're right. So what did uh, the word modest and humble, I think that comes out to just one word? Yeah. What yeah. is the word? In the, mo uh, the, uh, the, the word for the modest and humble is mutawazi in the original text. Which is an Arabic word? Yeah. That means? That means actually, um, I won't say equal, but the position yourself to the equalness of your essence. Huh. Uh, Does that make sense? Uh, I think Slightly. I, thi <laughs> I think it's used for to balance the scales. It's from the verb that can be used to balance a scale. Maybe. That's how I've, uh, that's how I've understood you're, it. You're the native one. No, the, in Arabic, and th that's huh. how it's used yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, as a you're verb. Right, you're huh. right. So it's the, and so in Turkish uh, also, the word of knowing your position comes from the same word. The key understanding here, maybe, for example, if you uh, if you think about the modest or humble person, uh, that does not necessarily mean you're low. That does not necessarily mean you're uh, kind of, you know, what a weak. Um. It, it means you act accordingly what your essence, what your real position is. Uh, because it comes from the same root as being? Parallel. Parallel or uh, yeah, knowing your position. I, th I think maybe that's a good way. That's a good way of putting it. The author's usage of the word humble and modest here is one who knows his actual position. Yeah, and hmm. act accordingly. But we'll come to that. Okay. Okay. I'm and sorry. then the other word, which was conceited and pr proud and conceited, came into one word too. Marush. Marush, which again is an Arabic word. Yep. That. It actually, it's the opposite. Okay. That does not act according to, according to its essence, his or her essence, to his or her real position. Let's go away from acting before. Th that's true I'm because sorry. acting comes from what we understand of ourselves. So he does not, he or she does not know his or her real position. Okay. So maybe we can say he ascribes something more than what he is. Yep. Or possibly even less. Yep. Okay. It, maybe we could say it goes both ways. So. The one who is modest and humble, according to the author, is somebody who knows his position, exactly. that he's not, uh, a s he's not below a certain level or above a certain level. He just matches himself, huh, the essence of himself. Okay. And the opposite is one who... Uh, Goes off. Uh, yeah, in either direction. He exceeds his limits in either direction. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh, let's... Huh. So, after this separation, after this fork, mm -hmm. they go separate ways. Huh. And the way is taking the name of the tribal chief yep. or not taking the name of the tribal chief. Okay, 
But before we do that, so we have a, that's a good point, the tribal chief and what that is. But before we talk about the tribal chief, perhaps we need to talk about the difference of positions mm -hmm. that the person is in and the tribal chief is in before hmm. we go with that. So if we're saying that the one of them is modest and humble, meaning he knows his real position, mm -hmm. what's his position? Yeah. And how is it different than the tribal chief? In the text. In the text. So... What I understand is, I think you're waiting for me to speak. Yes. What I understand is, is that uh, my position, and this is the same for every human, my real position is that I cannot provide for my own needs. Okay. Which we but I'm going to ask some proofs within the text. Uh, from the previous uh, paragraphs, we've been learning that uh, or I think even in this, pa in this paragraph too, that he has, uh, the previous sentence, he will perish in the face of innumerable, innumerable enemies and needs. It means every human has innumerable needs hmm. and enemies. He has to know that. Huh. That's somebody who knows that, knows that, is modest and humble. That his, ends, that his needs are endless and his needs are uh, his enemies are endless. And we talked about an example of enemy could be hunger. Yeah. Or many other things. Many other things. So if a person truly knows his position, mm -hmm. that means he has to accept that his needs are endless and his enemies are endless too. And he can't provide for them, which is from the previous paragraph also. Yep, yep, yep. So he, right. he can't he has endless needs and he can't provide for them. Mm -hmm. So, look, that's my position. So, the opposite, uh, the other, the, there's only one other position, the one who has no needs and the one who can provide for the needs that I have. I'm, I'm someone in the desert. I think or I don't believe that I don't have enemies mm -hmm. or I don't believe that I have a lot of needs, deep needs. Mm -hmm. It's a false. Right. That's false. That's not reality. That's true. That's looking at the conceited and proud man. But let's, mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's uh, whatever the, uh, but we need, before we get into that, we need to talk about the tribal chief. Because one of them takes mm. the tribal chief's name, one of them doesn't. Okay. So let's start with the humble and modest man. Okay. And his relation with the tribal chief. He and knows his real position. Uh, he knows his position. He needs somebody who can, who, excuse me, somebody who has no needs has no enemies, mm -hmm. and somebody who can provide for all of his needs. Yep. Okay, so I'm in the desert, that's what I need. Yes. Okay. So I, uh, if I'm uh, proud and conceited, I'm... Wait, 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 wait a second. Okay, okay, before okay. The okay. Proud, before, before the proud and conceited. Huh, so one by one, okay. Okay, so, so we have that, this role of the uh, tribal chief. Basically, what we're getting at is, we have the role of a created being and the creator. Oops, we just made a jump. Yes, That's, uh, this is the important one. I can't provide myself for myself. I can't, cr I didn't create myself. Yes. I can't create the things that I need to sustain myself. Of course. I am a created being. And everything else too. I am a created being. <laughs> you just stopped me too much today, okay. I am a created being and that is my position. Huh. Okay. That's why recognizing my createdness is true modesty and humbleness. Oops. Yes, you're, yes, you're right. And so I need to take the name of something that is not also a created, a being. created being. Which is where your point was. I am of the same nature in terms of created nature, mm -hmm. as this glass or this book. We are both created. I can't provide for my needs. The book can't provide for its own needs. And understanding this is the real humbleness. Exactly. That there are only two different positions. Created, creator. I like the way you say creator. Thank you. So. That's, uh, uh, now, there might be more details we can talk about. Am I actually the same as a book? That's something we can talk about yeah. in a later thing. But in terms of my actual real position, I'm either created or creator. If I'm created, I can only take the name, I can 
only logically want to take the name of something else that is not created. Yes. So, huh, now we can talk about the proud and conceited one. He doesn't recognize himself as a created being. Okay. That's essentially what this is getting at. And since he doesn't recognize his reality as a created being, he doesn't have the, he doesn't even think to uh, take the creator's name. Uh, as the tribal chief. As the tribal chief, as the, yes, exactly. S well, yeah. So, it starts, it starts with us and knowing ourselves. This is where w how we should finish this. Mm -hmm. So, the whole key to this, maybe the entire first word is, Knowing oneself, what is Bismillah, which is the, this, if this uh, first word is the explanation of Bismillah, what is Bismillah? I think it's hidden in this uh, paragraph, this is the story, so this is how it's being explained. Knowing my role, I can't know my creator mm -hmm. unless I know my role, because it's my humbleness that is going to lead me to take the creator's name. Otherwise? I won't. Otherwise, I, I don't even think about doing it because I don't. I, mean, I won't need it. It doesn't even come into my mind. Yep. Yes, you're okay. right. So th it doesn't start with God up there. Oh. It starts with, uh, or it doesn't start with me knowing God up there. It starts with me no knowing myself first, knowing my position. Do you mean that if I don't know myself well enough, in uh, the essence of being created or n not, hmm? that won't take me truly to the God. Yes, that's the first one, that's the big step. Mm -hmm. That's if I don't recognize myself as created, yes. then I can't recognize the Creator. Now within that, let's say I've recognized that, this goes into a little more deeper, but as much as I understand what my createdness means, that's how much I understand about my Creator. Okay, that's and another story. That's another thing which is this whole series is written for. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think that's good. Maybe we should finish here? Yes. Okay, then I'll finish it and then we will uh, hopefully continue this later. So, thank you very much. I hope we had a good discussion. I hope you benefited from it. I did. Uh, see you next time. Bye.